Hey muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very, very, very well. Okay, I'm super excited because you guys really liked the first one of this and it was really, really, really fun to film. So I'm very happy to film another one and I would love to make this a series. So if you would like for this to be a series, please just continue supporting the videos. Uh, basically what I do is I have an email and I'll put it on the screen right now. It is adammcintyrehelp at gmail.com. And basically, people email me for my take on a situation that is going on in their life and they want some sort of advice or some sort of direction. And the thing that is interesting about this is I am not the best at giving advice. So it kind of is going to be hit or miss whether I do a good job, but I'm going to definitely try my best. And the, the aim here is if you need to get something off your chest or you just want a little bit of, you know, a little bit of hearing someone's opinion on it. That is what I'm here for. This kind of feels like to me whenever like my friends come to me for a problem and I know I'm not the best to give them advice, but I'm listening to them and I try to give some sort of advice anyways. So yes, if you want, email that email. Um, and I basically just choose ones that kind of scream out to me. Um, so make sure to have the heading be as good as possible because it's kind of, it always draws my attention. We're just going to get right into it. So... We have this first one says, my sister-in-law wants my man. Okay, we're starting off strong with family drama, which you know I love. I do not want my name mentioned, please. You know it's going to be good whenever these bitches are begging me that they do not want their name attached. For context, I've been with my boyfriend going on six years. Okay, so very long. And pretty much everyone in his family, uh, my in-laws are basically my in-laws because we've been together so long. And we also have a baby. My sister-in-law is married to my boyfriend's brother, and they've been together nine years and have three kids. When I first met her, I could tell something was up with her. I tried getting close with her and whatnot, but it always seemed like we had a disconnect. My boyfriend has three sisters and one brother, and his sisters and mother-in-law have always told me that whenever my sister-in-law and brother-in-law get in fights, she always cries to them and tells them that she picked the wrong brother. Okay. And says other crazy stuff like that. I heard her say it once at a cookout we had. I always have wanted to go to a cookout, by the way. Um, so please invite me to that. Uh, and when I walked out in the kitchen, she was crying and telling my mother-in-law the same things. When she saw me standing there, she said that I didn't mean it. But I went outside and told my boyfriend, uh, who made me tell her husband, and it caused a huge fight between them uh, when they went home and ended up flipping out on me the next day and made me seem like I was a horrible person for telling what she had said, basically. That was four years ago, and I haven't uh, heard her say it again in front of me, but my boyfriend's family tell me that she still says it all the time, and it really pisses me off. Even stuff she does around my boyfriend pisses me off. She calls my boyfriend by his middle name and says it all flirtingly Ooh, when she talks to him and I hate when she is around him. How do I get over it? Clearly she's not leaving the family and neither am I. My therapist told me I shouldn't feel a type of way because he chose me and not her and he doesn't flirt back or anything, but I swear sometimes I just want to knock her out, but I don't want to be kicked out of the family. It's crazy that she gets away with flirting with my man and saying she picked the wrong brother because if I did that, my boyfriend would leave me in a heartbeat and his family would stop talking to me. Okay, here's my situation opinion on this. When she says I picked the wrong brother, maybe this is just my opinion, but I feel like she's just trying to like weaponize something against him in a fight. I don't necessarily know if that means that she wants your man or she's in love with your man i think in the heat of a moment of a fight she's like i picked the wrong brother it's a really weird thing to say but i don't know necessarily if it has a connotation of like she wants the d you know what i mean no that was gonna be my opinion until i read that she like calls your boyfriend by like his middle name and she acts all flirty with him and that is a problem and obviously you're saying that your boyfriend doesn't do it back to her but i think it's wildly inappropriate considering that she's been with her partner for nine years they have three kids you've been with yours for six and you know you have a baby it's like it just is oh my dogs are barking out there if you hear that there's probably a dog walking by don't worry my mom is out there in case you hear hear that barking that's basically whenever they hear anyone go past okay sorry i'm back okay so here's my thing again i wasn't gonna say that i thought it was flirting necessarily until or, or i didn't think it was gonna be a problem until about the flirting and that is really weird um again considering that 
she's been with her partner for nine years. They have three kids. You've been with yours for six and you have a baby together. It's wildly inappropriate for her to be acting flirty. And the fact that you basically told on her and then, you know, they had a big fight, her and her partner. Well, that is something they should be addressing because she should not be doing that. And like family is so messy in general. Stop flirting with my man. So you're saying, how do I get over it? You know, your therapist is telling you to just kind of leave it because your boyfriend doesn't flirt back. But obviously, even if he wasn't flirting back, that's irritating and annoying and disrespectful. And she's not respecting your boundaries or his boundaries and is being just very or her husband or boyfriend or whatever it is um it's it's really weird how do you get over it i'm gonna be honest i would just kind of cut her off totally like i'm a very hot and cold type of person i'm also a person that does not believe that because family is blood that you have to care for them it just for me this is wildly inappropriate and if she's been doing it for so many fucking years stop like stop like ugh. you're saying it was four years ago uh, you haven't heard her say it again and wait that was four years ago. I haven't heard her say it again in front of me. But my boyfriend's family, she still says it all the time. Okay, we need to stop being around her. Like, I know it's family and then you're taking yourself away from things. You and your boyfriend need to, like, stop being as close with her because she is not respecting a boundary. You both need to sit down. If you're going to continue seeing her, which obviously you will, you both need to sit down and talk to her because if he does it, she's probably going to flirt back with him and try to fucking fuck him. And if you do it, she's going to call you crazy. So you both need to do it so she knows that that is your man, you're his woman, and mind, like, go, like, boundaries, please. So that's my advice on that. I don't think you're overthinking it. I think she's being really, 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 really bad. Okay, this one says, a weirdly codependent friendship. Oof, let's get into it. It says, girl, I don't even know where to start. Okay, hit me with it. Basically, I've known this person for almost three years. We had a falling out during the first few months of knowing each other, which led to, which was a massive deal to them. But to me, it was just, you know, them ghosting me. Uh, we went to see an artist tour in 2022 and had a great time, after which I didn't message them as much as I did before because I was really busy with exams. When I find time to message them again, they asked me to remove the pictures of us from the concert on their profile. What? And they then blocked me once I'd done so. Oh, they made sure you got those photos done and then they said, okay, bye-bye. They blocked you. What makes this slightly more complicated is that I learned after them blocking me that they had been interested in me romantically. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. I rekindled my friendship with them, Pride 2023. Happy Pride! <laughs> and until recently, everything was going pretty well. Then I came back from uni and they were constantly messaging me, asking me to hang out every single day and bas basically being all very rather clingy and demanding it got to the point where i was seeing them more than my family so i eased up on the messaging and told them that i'd been feeling extremely exhausted their personality can be quite draining to be around and the hour bus journey into the city every day had me feeling exhausted and burnt out you don't need to explain yourself to me i'm completely on your side here it just so happened that the day i told them i was feeling burnt out my grandparents came for a surprise visit my mom is really oh i haven't heard mom are you irish i haven't heard someone say mom in a while there's mom mom and mom i love it my mom is rather strict on technology use when they're visiting and essentially once they'd left i came back to a repeat of the 2022 incident uh with them having blocked me on social media after i was unable to communicate with them i called them to clear up where i was and why i wasn't responding only for them to tell me that they had a mental health crisis because of it and were blaming me for not responding I tried to explain why I wasn't replying to them and they refused to believe me, asking why I couldn't have messaged them later in the evenings or at all times when I was usually asleep. I'm honestly not sure if I'm in the wrong here. I don't know what to do because I really do f value their friendship. Okay, here's my thing. This hot and cold blocking, unblocking, blocking, it's things I've engaged in in the past. It's really draining on me and it's really draining on the other person and... It's just best to cut those off. Like It's best to cut those off, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I appreciate that you value the friendship. I think that's great. I think when you have a big fight with a friend, it either goes one of two ways. Like It lasts forever. It has lingering effects. You never speak again. Or it makes you stronger. And in this instance, it seemingly has made your friend feel very, 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 like you said, uh, codependent. Sorry, my wires are like completely fucked in here. Um, 
it's made them very, very, very codependent on you. And that is draining for you as well. And so for them saying that you caused them a mental health crisis because you didn't respond to them for a few days while your parents were visiting, you don't even need to, in my opinion, people are probably going to be like, you should have told your friend that you were going to be busy for a few days. And honestly, yeah, maybe you could have just messaged them and said, hey, my parents are visiting. They don't like whenever I am on my phone, so I'm not really going to be responding to you. But the fact that they immediately jumped the gun and blocked you, this is not a friendship worth fighting for, in my opinion. I think it's going to be draining in the long run. I think this person is a little bit too dependent on you. And in the long run, you're the one making most of the effort to try and make sure that they're feeling okay and you need to start looking out for yourself as well so i'm gonna be completely honest with you and i think you need to be done with this friendship i think do not go back it's it's not worth it like that is so draining it, it, it's not worth it in my opinion so don't go back in my opinion okay ah oh, this one says yes i love these ones this one says i too adam i'm a home wrecking whore Yes! I love these ones because y'all are so messy. There was a home wrecking one in the first one, and that one was crazy. I hope this one lives up as well. I also love that you're saying, I also too am a home wrecking whore. I do not support home wrecking. I just think the stories are quite interesting to read. Hi, Adam. I need to give you the shit on my life right now. It's crazy messy. Background information. I'm 20 years old, I'm female, and I had moved to a new city in my state and started a new job about a year ago. At this new job, there's an executive chef. Uh, it's always at these workplace environments. If I ever get a partner, he's not allowed to work. Y'all bitches just be cheating. Cheating. At this job, there's an executive chef who has been my boss now for eight or nine months out of the year. We always get along super well. I'm, I'm sure you're going to tell me that you're getting along really well. He's very well respected, very charismatic. Everyone adores this man and adores in all capitals. So I, we're, we're going somewhere strong here. This person is dying bad. We joke with each other, tell each other personal shit. And one thing leads to another. He's texting me about meeting with a, wait, he's texting me about meeting with a strange while his, I guess he's texting you about meeting up with him. I don't know. This is worded weird. Um, while his girlfriend, a baby mom of two is away with the kids. And I hope that you didn't go because you know that he has a baby mama of two at home who is, you know, away with the kids. So I would like for this story to end now and that you did not go on this meetup. But I'm going to guess that you did. Mm -mm -mm. I recently got out of a five year relationship. I don't. We, you're you're about to justify home wrecking. I need to mute my phone. You're about to justify home wrecking. I'm not on your side. I'm not on your side. I recently got out of a five year relationship. I'm nice single and I'm loving the freedom. I'm sure you are, but he's not single. He's not single. And even if he's pushing for it, you don't do it. You you know that there is kids involved and and a girlfriend. I'm nice single and loving the freedom. Experiences I'm having sexually, pretty much. Yeah, I've used your Adam and Eve codes. You know what? Actually, I'm on your side. Thank you for using the Adam and Eve codes. Actually, I'm 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 completely on your side, and I appreciate this. Okay, let me get comfortable. Actually, I really enjoy being comfortable for these videos. It really just changes the vibe. All right. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I've used your Adam and Eve codes. God bless you. I love you for that, and I love them. Thank you. So I'm single and a horn dog. Well, clearly, if you're using the Adam and Eve code, cheers. And I make a joke about being, wait, I make a joke about me being that strange. I don't know what you mean by this. We flirt for about two weeks without anything happening or us just straight up saying, let's fuck. Where is the class? Whatever happened to like a nice old date? Not with a taken man, but like in general. And then he drunk adds me on Snapchat, texts me on iMessage saying, is it bad? And how bad is it? I reply, what do you mean? I think it's fine. All hell breaks loose and we make plans for five days away. You are going on a trip with a taken man. His girlfriend with the kids are away and what is he doing? Fuck him. He's an asshole. And you're in the wrong too. And you're in the wrong too. Oh, but I've gotten a pros and cons list. This person has given me a pros and cons list. Pros. We get a hotel instant sexual attraction 
chemistry, we get along so well, work so well, to, and he probably does with the other bitches he's cheating on too. Work so well together, have a lot in common. He's my type. He's taken. He treats me good. The bar's on the floor, babe. He's my type. He treats me good. He's sweet with me, and I'm his best employee, and everyone knows it. I'm sure. Okay, the next one, the next pro is he matches my freak. The sex is so good. Damn it, muckers. Damn it, muckers. <laughs> Damn it, muckers. Cons. He's my boss. 38 years old. Two kids and a girlfriend. We wish we could be together. In a poly, uh, in a poly relationship with his girlfriend. But his girlfriend would never go for it. Does his girlfriend know that you're currently getting together? I'm sure not. His girlfriend would never go for it, and so he's cheating. I'm home wrecking, and we both can stop no matter how wrong it is. It's so wrong, but it feels so right. So now I've been fucking my boss for a little over a month. We still haven't kissed yet. <laughs> Baby. Okay, I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to tell you the harsh truth. We still haven't kissed yet because we both don't want anything going further than sex and the possibility that could lead. But we feel loyalty towards each other. We're open and honest about our sexual relations with other people. We tried not to do this again after the first night in the hotel, but we're too in sync with each other sexually that we can stay away. He's perfect, but he's my boss and unavailable. My feelings on this. A man's going to cheat if they want to, but I know that makes me as bad as him for enabling it. Yes, it does. I know the same way... They come the same way they go. So basically about him doing this to other people. I'm just worried about shit getting too real and actually falling in love with this man. And then you'll get with him, have two kids, and he'll do to you what he is doing to the girl. So my question is, is this bad? <laughs> Mucker! Pick yourself up off the floor! And how bad is it? I know I'm the asshole, but I'm having too fun. Something that feels this good can't be wrong. Right, Adam? Wrong. All right, I'm going to give you a harsh reality. I'm putting my fan in front of me. A harsh reality. And I don't want you to hate me. I really don't want you to hate me. I want you to continue using the Adam and Eve codes. I don't want you to turn against me. Please be a mucker forever. But I need to tell you the God's honest truth. Are you ready for it? Oh, perfect. I love having a fan in my face. It just makes this experience so beautiful. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, he is not interested in you at all. And you know why he's not interested in you at all? You have not kissed. Let me tell you something. This man is separating relationship slash love slash whatever with just fucking. You're a fuck buddy. I hope this is not too harsh. But you're currently enabling him cheating. So I'm not on your side. Until you use the Adam and Eve code. Then I'm so on your side. Um, he is not interested in you romantically at all. Um, I think you're probably just like a fuck buddy to him. And I would assume that he has other ones as well. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, so don't get your hopes up in the, in the most sympathetic way to like to you, even though you're enabling him cheating, don't get your hopes up because he's not interested in you. Like he literally is just using you for sex. And I, and I would say if you're enjoying it and that's fine. However, he's cheating. So at a certain stage, you need to tell him, I am so enjoying our sex. I'm so enjoying our time. I need you to make a decision, me or her, or something like that. Or you need to be the one to leave. Because you can't, you can't keep this up. You can't keep this up. Come on. Come on. Okay, we have another one. Is it my fault did I kill my friend? Hello? Hey, Adam, I hope you're doing well. Are you? I just need your side of the story because even to this day, I feel like it was all my fault. I feel like it's my fault she's dead. Where are we going with this? So to start, I'm a self-defense instructor. 
I host private lessons to boys and girls who pay for my courses. So I had this friend named Alice. She always wanted me to host defense classes for her since she thought what I did was cool and wanted to learn. But since she was only asking for classes but not actually paying, I hesitated because I already had classes reserved already that I needed to get done. I don't, I'm scared for where the story is going. I did want to teach her, but I had clients waiting, so I decided, or I declined her request, and I didn't hear much after that. I just thought she was busy or maybe wanted me to get done with my full schedule. A few months w went by, and I had nothing. I was really worried. My schedule wasn't as full anymore, and I had some time to do classes with her, but I still had no replies from her. Something in my chest sucked in. I texted her parents just in case what happened, and what they said was horrific. Uh-oh. Ooh. Ooh. That's not. A few months before, she, a few months before, she was kidnapped while walking with her dog, Milky. And a few days later, she was found dead in her empty apartment. Or in an empty apartment. Oh my god. Oh my god. A part of me thinks if I had done classes with her earlier, she would still be alive. She would have better protected herself. I think it's my fault I could have prevented this. I still cry every night thinking about this. What do you think, Adam? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is horrifying and awful. And I'm so sorry for your loss. That Oh my fucking God. Okay. You cannot blame yourself for that happening. Like, Alice, the girl, wanted to do a class but didn't want to pay. You had customers that were paying already in the books. So even if you were going to give her a free class, it would have been a while. So none of this is on you. You know what I mean? Like none of, none of that is your fault. And it, it, it's devastating that this happened. And it's devastating that you're blaming yourself for this. This is not your fault at all. At all, literally at all. You had to do your work. She wanted to do a free class and that's fine. But you just didn't have the time to do it because you were with paying customers. This is not your fault and I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Okay. Boyfriend of five years cheated on me with a 40-year-old woman. All right. Hi, Adam. I'm very interested to hear your take on this situation. You feel like a good friend of mine from just watching your videos, so your input will be greatly appreciated. I'm a 25-year-old girl who was with the same guy since I was 20, so they've been together for five years. My ex and I are the same age. This will be important as the story goes on. Last September, he came home from work one day seeming off and weird. When I confronted him, he told me he felt like he wasn't in a good mental space to be in a relationship anymore. I was upset but respected his feelings as we, as we had both experienced a lot of trauma. And then they've put in um, quotation marks at generational trauma. Throughout our lives, but during our relationship specifically, I told him let's take some time and have some space to think about where we're both feeling. I went to stay with my mom for a week, uh, leaving him to stay at our apartment we had lived at together for two years. I came home a week later without telling him to find a woman in my house not in your house. I don't, this is literally like the, we were on a break, Ross and Rachel, but this pisses me off. Was it the girl from the previous story? <laughs> is this the, the one with the two kids? Are these stories all connected? There was a woman sitting in my house with him in my bed. Oh no, there's not. Oh no, there's not. Nothing was happening, but the vibes were definitely not right. I was obviously upset and asked him to take her home. When my boyfriend returned home that night, he reassured me that nothing was going on between the two of them because they were just friends. I accepted it for the time being because I loved him and wanted things to work out. However, 
About a week later, after, say, after staying at my mom's for the weekend, I returned home to find things and my apartment seemed off. Not in your apartment. Your apartment. By this time, it was October, so a month later. So some time, some time had passed since our initial needing space conversation. I come home to new sheets bought for my bed and the smell of perfume and... Oh, no, you didn't. And suspicious white substance... Okay. I don't want to read that. When we came home, I confronted him again, asking if he had slept with this woman in my bed. He admitted to me that he had. Oh, but I thought it was just his friend. And immediately started apologizing profusely. It broke my heart. I found out the same night that this woman wasn't a girl closer in age to my boyfriend, but a 40-year-old married woman with five children and three grandkids. What is she doing in his bed she should be at a pa meeting the kids need picked up from fucking school i was devastated to say the least confused and broken some time had passed i've moved to a new city and my ex and i have gone no contact from what i can tell they're still together oh no they're not oh no they're not she's married and she's presumably left her husband. Presumably. Well, we, we don't know for sure. Who's close in age with her... Wait. Presumably left her husband for my ex, who's in close in age to her oldest child, which is gross. But a new development has happened in the last week. My ex had a second Instagram account he used for band promotion. He recently requested to follow me on his account, and, or on this account, and I accepted it. It's been a week and he's still following me. What do I do? He hasn't reached out. Okay, that's really weird that he followed you and didn't reach out after all this time. Like, normally you would accept and he would send a message or something. Why are you just lurking on my page? Leave me alone. Stop disturbing my peace. Please. My first thought that maybe he was lurking on my account and accidentally hit request follow. Ooh, that's brutal. Brutal. I've been there before. And like watching people's stories by accident. Brutal. <laughs> brutal. But it's been almost two weeks and he hasn't blocked or unfollowed me. It's so weird. It makes me miss him. Oh, no, it doesn't. But I also hate what he did to me. Oh, yes, you do. He has my number blocked, so I'm super confused. Does he miss me? Is he curious what I'm up to? Is he unhappy with his ran through grandma? Okay, she's 40. Like, we hate her, but come on. <laughs> I don't know. Should I message him? Should I say fuck him and block him? Adam, I need your help, bestie. He was my first serious relationship and love, so I'm having a hard time letting him go. What is your advice? You can also say my name. You can say my name in your response. Well, hello, Madison. Madison, baby. This is literally going to be one of the most divisive topics because so many people are going to say, you both agreed to be on a break. So is it cheating? Who knows? You were on a break. And some people look at a break as we've broken up. Some people look at a break as we need a moment away from each other. I look at it as a moment away from each other. That means you don't cheat on anyone. We're still in a relationship. This was an entire plot in Friends with Ross and Rachel. We were on a break. Like, so for me, Madison, that is cheating. It is flat out cheating in my opinion. And the fact he lied about it, the fact he did it in your apartment, he didn't even have the audacity to do it in her apartment, her house. That's wrong. In your bed that you slept in? No. Why do I think he followed you? I'm going to be honest. I don't think he did it by accident. I think he's doing it to watch what you're doing. Like, get updates on your life. Do I think he wants to be back in a relationship with you? No. Do I think he's curious as to what you're doing? Yes. Should you go back to him? No. Yes, this was your first serious thing, but you are 25 years old. You are young and in your prime, and you do not go back to someone like that, in my opinion. Mucker, you better listen to me. You better listen to me. I want you to say fuck him, but don't fuck him. Okay. My friend always accuses me of stealing men from her. Uh-oh. Hi, Adam. Please keep me anonymous. No, this person's full name is... <laughs> also love you. Hey. So here's the situation. I have this friend. Let's call her R. R. 
R and I met in college and became instant friends. She's awesome to hang out with and is always down to go clubbing, go to bars, spontaneous adventures, etc. However, we've been having this ongoing issue and it's really beginning to piss me off. Nearly every time we go out, she inevitably points out an attractive guy we see or interact with. We have a similar type, so I'll generally agree, yes, hot dude alert. Sometimes, as we continue to interact with said dude, the guy subtly makes it clear that he's more interested in me. I don't mean that to sound shady, it's just what happens, or it's that he happens to find me more attractive, and a different guy could think I'm the less attractive one. It just happens, you know, that the ones we both go for, they like me more. Which is fair. It is what it is. True. This all came to a head one night when we got super drunk, and I admittedly got a little bit extra flirtatious with someone who she had pointed out in the crowd. A couple minutes into me talking with him, with her nearby, she storms off out of the bar, gets an Uber, and leaves me alone in there. I was sort of stunned and obviously quite wasted, so I assumed she felt sick and needed to go home. Not really knowing what to do, I just continued to hang out with the guy and eventually went home myself. When we talked in the morning, she was extremely angry. Oh, she held that grudge. Wow. Normally, like, you would, like, be, like, really drunk in the moment, and then the next day you'd be like, right, you pissed me off, but whatever. She's still angry the next day. And accused me of stealing every man that she expresses interest in. Keep in mind, I never actually pursued these men romantically. It was more just a fun night out and conversation. All right. <coughs> kind of the worst cop. Now, fast forward to now. Like, this was two years ago. We are still really good friends, but live in the opposite side of the country. So we don't see each other often, but have gone on a couple trips in various cities together. On several occasions, she has pointed out different men to me. And I guess I wanted to sort of take the initiative to say I'm not interested in, mostly as a way to keep the peace since these trips were short and I wanted to enjoy my time with her. Uh, I hate when you have to hang out when you hang out with people and you know that you have to do th things just not to, like, set them off. Like, I just want to be myself. I don't want to have to do things so you don't fucking react. All right. Something she's been doing now is almost testing me and saying, oh, you should go for it if I nod in agreement about them being hot. When she does this, I generally shrug and say, nah, it's not worth it. We're only here for a quick trip or a similar response. She now passively aggressive says, says things like, oh, wow, you've grown. Girl, fuck you. If I respond like that, which is super fucking annoying, of course. Like, bitch, first of all, I've never actually pursued any of these men, let, let alone steal them from you. Do you have any advice for me? Sorry if I'm rambling. I'm high. I love it. All right. Friends like this are draining, I'm going to be honest, where you'd have to, like, tippy-toe around them. Also, in an environment like a bar, it's... You can't decide who people are interested in. You know what I mean? Like, who they're finding attractive. If the guys are finding you more attractive than her, or they find her more than you, then it is what it is. It is what it is. Sure, you can be like, damn, I really thought that person was cute, but my friend's getting with them. And also, in terms of... If I was at a club and I go, oh my god, that guy over there is really cute, and my friend ended up getting with him, I'm going to be completely honest, though. I would be annoyed. It has happened to me before. So I also do see her point of view, but I also see the point of view of, like, you having to, like, tiptoe around her, and then she throws it in your face is really fucking irritating. But I also see her point of view where, like, if that is the case where she's finding people attractive and, you know, they're choosing you, it's not your fault, but it is annoying from your friend's standpoint, and it really does affect people's confidence levels. It's not your fault, it's not her fault, but she's definitely the one being more annoying. All right. Anonymous, please. Oh, this is going to be good. I don't know if I should stay in my 4.5 year long distance relationship. All right. Lay it on me. Hi, Mucker. Please keep it anonymous. So as you can see in the title, I've been with my boyfriend long distance for 4.5 years. Okay. Can I say something? No. This is going to piss off a lot of you. A lot of you. I'm actually really nervous to say it. Because I, I know that there's probably so many people that are watching right now that are going to get so offended. I don't believe in long distance relationships. I can hear people turning on me. Hold on. Sorry, that's probably so loud. I don't believe in them. Like, I feel like there is such a difference in being in person with someone, even if you're only seeing them once every couple weeks or something like that. But, like, 
long, long distance. You're not seeing each other six months, a year at a time and stuff. No, like I, I, well, it's just my opinion. I could never do it. I know people can do it. People do it. I think maybe it would be a little bit different if I was with someone. Actually, no. I think if I was with someone, see, if I was with someone for 4.5 years and they moved away for a year to the other side of the world, I'm going to be honest, I would break up with them because I would feel like I'm holding myself back from meeting people and experiences and acting like I'm in a relationship and I don't even see my partner. They're in Australia. Now, that is just my honest opinion. I have a lot of friends here in long distance relationships. It works for them. They're in healthy relationships. I'm not even in a relationship and I haven't been in one. So don't listen to me. But all I'm saying is that is a deal breaker for me. It is a deal breaker for me. I need to be in person. I need to like, I need like physical touch. I need, you know, it just, it's different. Like I spoke about this in the first video we did on this, where you're we talking about online friends. And I said, the online friends that have lasted for me are ones that I've met in person, even if it was once or twice, because it changes the dynamic. But anyways, let me hear this. I've been with my boyfriend long distance for 4.5 years. I'm from Ireland and myself and my boyfriend are also the same age. So we've been together since we were teens. We've met in person twice for extended periods of time. Okay. Now, I don't know how, how extended the periods of time are, but in 4.5 years, meeting twice. In 4.5 years. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it, if I'm being honest with you. I've just finished university here, and my boyfriend has gone to the military in his home country for the past year and will be getting out soon. He is also in university and once he gets out of the military, he will have to complete two to three years of college in his home country. He lives on the other side of the world and we're in a completely different time zone. Baby. Baby, break up with him. You are holding yourself back from so much. So he's been gone for the last year in the military. And once he comes back, he has like compulsory uh, college they used to do for three years. And you've seen him twice in f almost five years. You're holding yourself back so much. You're holding yourself back so much. Uh. He lives on the other side of the world and there's a huge time zone difference. Which, when we were teens during COVID, it was a lot more manageable. Anyways, since he's been in the military, I have had to lose my emotional dependency on him since he was the person I would go to for all my problems. I've never felt so alone. I need you to break up with him. I need you to break up with him. We still talk, but it has been so hard to match his specific schedule while in my last year of uni and wake up at the right time to talk to him. So I ended up developing more independence and became a little bit more resilient emotionally. I'm glad to hear it. The original plan was that I was going to graduate, then I was going to go on a trip to see him and his family for a few months, and then I would make the move over to his country to close the distance. Also, what people don't consider about long-distance relationships is if your relationship is built on seeing each other twice in five years, your relationship dynamic is going to completely change once you're living in the same house with each other. And it's a reason that a lot of long-distance relationships don't last because they go from being able to like put their phone down and not speak to their partner to living in the same house. Like that's completely different and changes everything. And, you know, people are able to hide a lot when you're only talking long distance. So it changes everything. All right. This is what I thought I wanted for a long time, but now that I've actually graduated, I've come to terms with a lot of new realities. Yippee! Maybe I don't want to move there and be the breadwinner and sacrifice career opportunities over there. I have a really niche science-related degree. Maybe I don't want to do a 9-to-5 over in his country while he does college. Maybe I want to work on my specific career. Maybe I want to go see Europe and meet my friends. Yes, you do! You want to live your life! Yes, you do! Maybe I want to go to, I will see Europe and I want to meet my friends in countries close by. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Maybe I just want a little part-time job so I can travel. Yes, you do. I'm not sure what I want anymore. And that's beautiful. And that's beautiful. And you need to be taken down by the burden of this man. Sorry, break up with him, please. 
Oh my goodness. I'm not sure what I want anymore. But this relationship was the only thing I wanted and the only thing I thought I needed before this year. I realized the long distance and being inside for years and not meeting friends, doing the normal things people our age do has affected me a lot mentally, making me want those things more. It just seems like me and him have a lot of compatibility issues and that love might not be enough. I feel I feel terrible for saying this. Okay, but now I imagine going from what you're going now to living together. You won't last. Break up with him! We've spoken to each other about this issue and he doesn't want to break up. He thinks that once he gets out of the military that everything will be fixed, but I do not subscribe. And you shouldn't have to wait. You should not have to wait for him. The reality is the same issues seem to remain. I've asked him for space to think about a relationship until we meet in two months time. And he texts me and calls me, but I feel so bad to have set a boundary. I love him and I don't want to lose him. But at the same time, I don't know if this is right anymore. Have I been way too committed to young? Yes. But that's fine, because you're still young. I feel bad about feeling how I feel, but I feel if I continue, nothing will change. And if I do end up deciding on breaking up, how do you think ending things on good terms? I love him and I want to end things right. Okay. To answer your question, I do think you should break up with him. How you should do it? Hmm. I was going to say go on the trip in two months time and tell him in person, but then I feel like that might be really awkward. And also then it might put you in the pattern of wanting to be back with him, but then he's going to be going again for three years. I don't think you should go on the trip. I don't think you should go on the trip at all. Use that money to go to Europe, honey. Um, okay. Here's my thing. How to end it on good terms. Uh, being honest. Tell him that you and him got together during the pandemic, which was a completely different time. You realize that you want to experience, you want to see things. You, It's not him holding you back necessarily, because don't hurt his feelings, but just say that it's not right right now at this time period. There's too much going on. There's too much overlap. There's too much time apart. Phrase it in that kind of way. And I think, I think it'll be fine. And I'm really happy for you coming to this realization. I think, it, I think it's really good. Okay. This one says help. Hello. Hey. Hey, Adam. I'm so glad you're offering help for those in crazy situations. My current situation is really crazy and I'm not sure what to do. Lay it on me. I'm 51 years old and I'm in the middle of a divorce from my ex-husband of 30 years. My oldest son is 29 and has a best friend the same age, and I've always looked at him as an extra kid. I have five children total. We've known each other for two years, and everything has been cool or... I don't know where this is going. Where is this going? We've known each other for two years, and everything has been cool and respectful. About two months ago, something switched, and I was attracted to his friend. No! Mommy, no! I told him right away, No! No! That is your son's best friend! Dead! No! Uh, you're so messy! I bet you know where this is going. No! I didn't think it was going this way. We started hooking up with the agreement that neither of us would get attached. Yet, yeah, he won't, but you will. He wanted to continue being with other women, and I knew that that would be the case. I am in no way trying to have a serious relationship with them. By the way, am I crazy for, like, I could never sleep with someone who's openly telling me that they're also sleeping with other people. There's something about it that I just really don't like. Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Like, I'm like, what am I not giving you? Is this cookie not good? Yeah, it's delicious. 
So sit down and stop being greedy. <laughs> um, I'm in no way trying to have a serious relationship with him. Let me guess. You fell for him. But I've not developed deeper feelings for him. What did I say? What did I say? I've also told him this, and I'm pretty sure he's developed feelings for me too. No, he hasn't. Sorry, he hasn't. He told me... He told me, but we both know a relationship is unrealistic. No, you want a relationship. He does not. So the actions are not matching the words in this situation. I cannot believe you're in a situation with your son's best friend. You're messy. Messy, messy. We've tried being more separate, but end up being back together. It's like we're dating without an official commitment. What makes it harder is that we're committed to remaining friends. My son does not know that we're hooking up. I want to cut off the physical stuff, but the connection is too strong. We're around each other. Help. What should I do? Keep me anonymous. I fucking bet you want me to keep you anonymous. <laughs> okay. You are ultimately the only one that's going to get hurt. And clearly it sounds like you already are. You need to stop hanging out with him, point blank, period. Point blank, period. Sorry. Sorry. Because you're getting hurt by this. Now, if you tell your son, I think your son is going to kill him. Because that is so, like, sleeping with your friend's mom, like, ugh, what the fuck? You're asking me what, what should you do? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Leave me out of this. <laughs> I don't know. That's on you. <laughs> but you're getting hurt, so get out of it. He does not care. He's sleeping with so many other people. And I bet you're not sleeping with anyone else. If that's true, then I'm right. All right. Let's do this one. I think I hate my boyfriend, but it's not his fault. Interesting. Hey, mother mucker. Hi. So I find myself in a complicated situation and I need advice on how not to be a shitty person. Lay it on me. So I, 21 female, met this guy, 23 male, on Bumble. I can't believe people actually use Bumble. And upon, like, you know, like Tinder and stuff. Like, yeah, but like Bumble, I'm like, just so goofy. On Bumble in late April, and upon our first meeting, we had some chemistry, so we ended up kissing. Not usually a big deal for me, but little did I know that this would turn into something a lot more serious a lot quicker than I wanted. And then the emoji that's, like, standing, like... <laughs> for context, by the way, I really appreciate when people put emojis in their story, because it just kind of, like, I just think it's really funny, so please do that. For context, he was doing volunteer work in my country... And we met two weeks before he had to go home. So we spent almost every day together. Ah, uh, one of those whirlwind relationships. Bet the sex was amazing. At this time, it started to feel like it was too much. Oh, maybe not. But I ignored it since he didn't have much time left in the country. And wholesome romance was new and exciting for me. We also started having sex. And one time, my dumbass said, I love you, mid rides. <laughs> no! No, that is brittle! Brittle! Oh, brittle, dude. Ah. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Rookie, rookie, rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. I've been there. I've been there. I've never said it, but I'm very close. Very close. And then I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> At the time, I thought I meant it. At the time, I was feeling all these feelings when I was in front of him in person, and it didn't feel like I was lying. And when we would talk... And, you know, feel about each other. Everything was true, but I'm scared because it's not true anymore. Anyways, he's back home now and we're dating now. Something I've been openly hesitating about doing, considering that this would mean that my first real adult relationship is long distance. I need to free the muckers from long distance relationships. The shackles of long distance relationships. And everything was happening so fast. You need... You, babe, I'm cutting, cutting to the jump. You need to break up with him now. You don't even love him. You don't even care for him, actually. It was just a fun thing. You thought he was going. You didn't want it to turn into anything. I don't know what changed, but I find myself getting annoyed by how he constantly wants to be on the phone with no real purpose. <laughs> you need to break up with him immediately. I usually hate phone calls in general, but I'm trying to like them. How lovey-dovey he is and the fact that he told all his friends and family about me and had me meet some of them. You need to break up with him 
immediately. This poor guy is so darn bad. I feel so bad for him. I see myself in him. This is why I say it's not his fault. On paper, he's genuinely a great boyfriend. He's attentive. He's kind. He's patient. He's understanding. And I know I don't deserve him. I can be avoidant and emotionally distanced. Plus, I have BPD, anxiety, and depression. Ooh, little cocktail. Which makes this stuff so much harder to navigate. Of course. I've spoken to him about this detached feeling and how quickly the relationship happened and before um, when I said about possibly taking a break. He freaked out and started crying and I didn't bring it up again. You need to break up with him. Not a break. You need to break up with him. From what I'm heard on from the TikTok therapist, um, this could be another symptom of me being traumatized and unhealed and I should stick it out. No. You met this guy. You did like a stint of time together because you, he said he was going to leave the country. You had fun. And that was all it was. I don't think this reflects on you in any way. If anything, you're being forced into this. Sticking it out feels like I'm forced, forcing myself to be in love with someone. I'm scared that no one will love me as much as he does if I break up with him given my track history. I'm hoping you and the fellow muckers can provide some insight. Okay, for the sake of this per guy who loves you so much and you don't love him, please break up with him. Even if you think it's, you know, the wrong thing to do for him, it will help him in the long run. Please break up with him. And it's not, it doesn't reflect on you in any, in any way, honestly. It does not reflect on you in any way. Um, and anyway, the way you speak about him is really sweet. So it's not, it's nothing on you at all. We'll do one more. I secretly hate one of my friends. Anonymous, please. Also, hey, I love you. Thank you. So basically, I, female 20, got really close with these two girls, female 19, female 21, in 2020 to 2022. We ended up having a falling out over some immature and petty stuff. They stayed friends while I was kicked out of the friend group. I reached out to both of them in January to rekindle our relationship because I was lonely. I only wanted to reconnect with one of them, though, uh, because I knew, but I knew that if I wanted to be friends with this person, I had to be friends with the other one. But I never had big problems. They're just really fucking annoying. They're 21 and they act like they're 14. They like drama. What are you trying to say? And starting it. What are you trying to say? They're boy crazy. Are you talking about me? Extremely immature. Are you talking about me? <laughs> Throwing fits about their birthday. Getting upset when me and the other friend would hang out. Won't let me sit in the front if the other person's driving. They're so... Pol they're... Uh, political and social opinions are horrid. They said that Black Lives Matter wasn't a real thing. They don't care about Gaza. They ignore boycotts. They don't vote. It's embarrassing to be with them. Well, they sound fucking terrible. Since I've started talking to them again, the person that they like is using me as a therapist for all their problems with the person they don't like. I've tried to give real advice, but my real opinion is that she should drop them. This all feels very high school and I hate it. But I have literally no one else. If I knew it was going to be like this, I wouldn't have reconnected. I love this person, but I hate the other one. They've always been the problem. I don't know what to do because the two people are obviously closer than I am with them. And I don't like causing drama. And I have literally no one else, but I don't know how much longer I can take B's immaturity. What should I do? Well, they've been friends with, for longer. And... They kicked you out and accepted you back in. So, unfortunately, I think you're going to have to ride this one out until person A eventually gets annoyed of person B. And then you two can, you know, be A and B. I think, unfortunately, you have to ride this one out. Sorry to say it. Sorry to say it. All right, muckers. Well, this was episode two of whatever this is. I really love doing these. Please email me with your ones. It is adammcintyrehelp at gmail.com. This is what will keep this series going. Also, if you watch these videos, I will do them for as long as you enjoy them. I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for being here and goodbye.